Wow. I need to catch my breath for a minute. Oh, thank you, sir. Shall we do that? Thank you! No! Thank you! <laughs> I could do that all day. It's been such an enormous pleasure being in the bar with all of you here this evening. I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed it, me and the band. And while we're doing this, while we're in the mood, could we have a huge one of these for my circus family, my crew, who come in and they build this thing every time we do a gig. They are remarkable. Thank you, guys. And while we're about it, there's a lot of local people helping us in here tonight, so I want to thank them as well. Thank you very much, all of you. Wow, that went by in a flash tonight. Uh, we are going to do a couple of more songs. Yeah. Whoopee. Um, in a minute, we're going to do a song off the very last album that I made with Pink Floyd, which was back in, I think, 83. And the album was called The Final Cut. Well, thank you. And um, the song we're going to do off it is called Two Sons in the Sunset, which some of you will know, but many of you may not. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about it. It's a rather sad song because it's about this bloke who's driving home through the forest in his van to go home and see his wife and his children and the third world war happens would you believe it as he's driving home so obviously he's burnt to a crisp and so are his wife and his family and everybody else just about um so it's not a very happy song but it it's very appropriate and apposite for us all at the moment because we are in greater danger of being that bloke in that van who never gets home to see his wife and his family than any group of people have ever been in the whole history of this small, beautiful planet that we call home. This is the most dangerous time, so we should pay attention. I'm, I'm sorry to get so gloomy. I am going to go and change my guitar and I'm going to get a sip of water to wet my whistle and then I'll come back and we'll sing that gloomy song. So, if you're down at the pub one night and you've run into your president or prime minister or whatever you've got here at the moment, I'm, never, I'm, I'm from the UK, I'm never quite sure they change so often, heads of state. Anyway, should you run into one, please, please, please tap him on the, or her on the shoulder and say, Oi, go down the bar with all the other heads of state and explain this to them. The people who live on this planet do not want you to keep an arsenal of nuclear weapons. We want to get rid of them all. So please go and do it. I mean, apart from anything else, they're incredibly expensive. And we could use that dosh for other things. We could look after the old lady on the street in New York for a start. Or maybe we could educate our children or have a health service or blah, or blah, or blah, blah. All of those things are more valuable than nuclear warheads, which have no value at all. So I'll, st I'll stop shouting. So um, I am going to get one more tiny sip of water. When I come back, though, we're going to hear a noise because Back in 1947, a committee of atomic scientists 
devised something called the Doomsday Clock, which was an imaginary clock with a ticking hand getting closer and closer to midnight. And it's meant to frighten us because they say, if it ever strikes midnight, we're all dead, okay? There'll be the initial Big Bang, but then there's the nuclear winter and we'll all... Anyway, so that's, that's the Doomsday Clock. They've changed the amount of time for it to get to midnight every year. Last year, it was 100 seconds. This year, it's 90 seconds. Next year, it's going to be less than that, I think. Anyway, when I come back, okay, I'm going to stamp my foot. I'm not going to do it now. And I've got a good friend under the stage, and he's going to press a button. And you will hear the doomsday clock starting to tick, because it's part of the sound effect for the rhythm of the swan. 